Hey everybody, it's Rockula, and welcome back to Rockula Retrospective. This is day number eight of my Vita series, which is Vlog Every Day in April. My theme is 30 bands in 30 days, and today's band is the Dead Kennedys. Yesterday in the Devo video, I spoke of worshipping the hard rock gods of the 70s, and the band at the top of the mountain was Kiss. As I got older, the natural progression from there was into more extreme forms of hard rock and heavy metal. This put me at odds with the punk crowd because I had been fed anti-punk propaganda from the media and my friends all thought that punk was for, how shall we say, uh, mentally challenged people. My first introduction to kids that felt as isolated as I did was at Rocky Horror. I got exposed to lots of different forms of music but my friend Russell Turns was the guy who had the punk cred. He taped his Dead Kennedys records for me and I really got into them. At that time, the only punk bands I had heard were the Ramones and the Sex Pistols. In high school, most of the punk and hardcore that Cabe and Scott played on KNON sounded like a jam box recording of crappy musicians who just learned to play and were screaming into a mic. The Dead Kennedys were different because they could actually play. Looking back, it always seems that I noticed the drums first and the guitars second. I hardly ever paid attention to the bass because 70s rock bass players are to be felt and not heard. Punk guitar to me meant Johnny Ramone two finger power chords and no solos. These guys played big chords soaked in delay and didn't always have their distortion cranked up to 10. The guitars were frequently spooky. The drums were quick and precise and way faster than I was used to hearing. I could actually hear the bass line this time. Instead of laying underneath the surface, the bass sounded more like a rhythm guitarist playing a bass. And then there's Jello. He's not singing about groupies or Dungeons and Dragons. Jello is talking about real issues that matter in the real world. Plus, he's really irritating. The teenage boy in me loved singing along in the car to a cranked up DK tape, and it quickly joined the rotation whilst delivering pizzas on the mean streets of Lake Highlands. Many of my fellow metalhead friends had been programmed to hate punk as well, but that slowly started to change as bands like Metallica, Anthrax, and Slayer professed the virtues of punk. Jeff Hanneman even had a DK logo on his guitar. I mostly ignored lyrics up until this point because they seemed to be a necessary evil in music. I never heard much substance in lyrics before I listened to punk. Songs were mostly about love or some fantasy concept that was meant to distract you from the real world. Jello was taking on all kinds of issues that I heard people talk about but never heard them sing about. It made me start to think more about what I was actually seeing around me instead of just choosing what was the most comfortable or agreeable view for me to agree with. This is true, I was an upper middle class kid who never had to want for anything. But Jello made me feel that your intentions and your actions were more important than where you came from. Plus, it was just as hypocritical to look down on someone because they grew up advantaged as it was to do so on someone who was disadvantaged. Divisive politicians weren't the only enemy. Jello also aimed his derision at the people who sought to divide us from within. For every anti-government or corporate rant, there was a song about some greedy scumbag exploiting the punk scene or sheep-like fashion punks who were more into scene politics than the actual music. The message that I got from Jello was that you can strive to make the world a better place, but first you have to accept that you're going to wade through a lot of shit to get there. Even decades later, when I saw him on a speaking tour, he amended that sentiment for me just a bit, and I figured out that you can't let having to wade through shit cause you to become so angry that you get stuck in it. This valuable advice has stuck with me ever since. Unfortunately, the Dead Kennedys split up in 1986. The other band members eventually reformed with a different singer as Jello went on to become an elder statesman. Since then, he has run his label Alternative Tentacles as well as appearing on many different projects and his own. His current project is the Guantanamo School of Medicine, which features two members of another band on my VEDA series, Ralph and Larry from Victim's Family. As the band progressed, so did their music. It got more technically proficient as well as sonically diverse. Since people like to put labels on things, I guess you'd have to classify them as progressive, psychedelic, political surf punk with a dash of lounge music thrown in for comedic effect. 
Of course, I'd like for you to share this video, like and subscribe, but most of all, I'd like for you to share your thoughts about the dead Kennedys down in the comments below. Thanks for watching my Vita series 30 Bands in 30 Days and keep watching the end of this video for the complete list of bands that I will be covering. Tomorrow is day 9 of Vlog Every Day in April and the next artist is Dr. Zoltan Obelisk. I'm Rockula and this is Rockula Retrospective.